What's up, everybody? I'm Finn McKinty. This is the Punk Rock NBA. Today, we're here to talk about a day to remember. We're here to talk about how they got so fucking big. This is part of an ongoing series where I deconstruct how important bands got big. If you're a nerd like me who just likes to figure out how things work, likes to reverse engineer things, then hopefully this will be fun for you. If you're in a band or you have a product or maybe you're just into marketing, then hopefully you'll get some inspiration and ideas. Okay, so let's get into it. If you're watching this, I'm guessing you are pretty familiar with the day to remember, but just in case you aren't, the band started in 2003 in Ocala, Florida. They have six albums out. They run their own festival. It's called Self Help Festival. They have their own label. They even have their own recording studio. Their 2009 album Homesick went to number one on the independent charts, and their 2016 album Bad Vibrations went to number two on the main Billboard chart. Homesick and What Separates Me From You are both certified gold. That means they sold over half a million copies and their single if it means a lot to you went platinum guys that means it sold over a million copies altogether they have sold over two million albums and god knows how much merch so how did some metalcore kids from a crappy town in central florida end up selling millions of albums and touring all over the world here's what i think are the three key factors key factor number one is truly great songs they are just like five levels better than any band in their scene in my opinion and that has been true since day one of the band. So what exactly makes their songs better than everybody else's? Let's look at the specifics. First thing is that they use the proven pop formula for songwriting as their starting point. Yes, they have chugs, they have screaming, but make no mistake, they are using the same basic formula as Demi Lovato or Taylor Swift or any other pop artist. And just to be super clear, this is a good thing because that formula works. It's why their songs feel like real songs, whereas so many other metalcore bands would just play what I call riff salad, just kind of randomly sticking parts together with no real structure. Early Devil Wears Prada is a great example of riff salad, and it's why they haven't had as much longevity, in my personal opinion. The fact that they use the pop formula is also why they're able to combine the heavy parts with the pop punk parts in a way that feels natural and seamless, whereas when other bands did the heavy thing mixed with the pop thing, it usually felt really clumsy and forced. They'd go from the generic breakdown riff for the verse to the clean part for the chorus, and it just sounded like two completely different songs by two different bands. Now, contrast that with the Data Remember song, All Signs Point to Lauderdale. That's the I Hate This Town, It's So Washed Up song that you might know. That song has dropped C chugs and double bass and screams, but if you listen, you'll realize it's just a straight up pop song that you could rearrange and give to Demi Lovato and it wouldn't sound weird. The bottom line is they have great songs because they take it really fucking seriously. And believe it or not, that is actually not as common as you might think. I've worked with music producers for many, many years, so I know exactly how a lot of bands work because they text me to complain about it. And way, way too many of these bands show up at the studio with unfinished songs, or maybe they wrote their songs in Guitar Pro and they don't actually know how to play them. I mean, it's pretty sad, but that's how a lot of bands work. And a day to remember are the exact opposite of that, and it shows. So that is key factor number one for their success, truly great songs. Key factor number two is great packaging. Now, you've heard me talk before about how important it is to have great packaging for your music. And by packaging, I mean basically everything that you put out that isn't the music itself. So album artwork, merch, videos, stage production, all that stuff is the packaging. And I think A Day to Remember have some of the best fucking packaging in the business. So let's talk about what specifically makes it great. First is that although they change up the specific look all the time, the voice and the personality behind the packaging are always consistent. Consistent. Everything they do has this consistent vibe of being super accessible, fun, and down to earth. There is no rock star shit there. They're just being themselves, which is a bunch of kids from the suburbs who grew up on pop punk and metal and hardcore having fun being in a band. I think this is super key to making people really relate to them. And just to kind of back up the idea that this is an important thing, if you look, you'll see that same kind of personality, that same kind of accessible vibe in a lot of bands that have really diehard followings that last over time. A couple examples being like Kill Switch, Parkway Drive, Black Dahlia Murder, August Burns Red, Every Time I Die, they're relatable. And I think that is absolutely critical to longevity. And the second ingredient in their great packaging is just great fucking execution. As I said in my other video about Bring Me the Horizon, they always insist on the highest standards when it comes to their packaging. One example of this is the packaging for the deluxe version of the Bad Vibrations physical release, which was designed by a very talented guy named Mike Cortada. It's got this really 
cool die cut on the cover and there's like a whole other layer of artwork printed on top that's only visible in a black light that is just going way above and beyond especially in a time where physical releases are less relevant than ever but they don't cut any corners another example is their videos where so many other bands take the easy way out and do the generic like band playing in a spooky warehouse thing that i always make fun of they always push themselves to do something different my favorite one is right back at it again which my friend drew rust directed it's this insanely detailed mix of green screen and animated graphics and hand painted animation cells and to give you guys an idea of exactly how fucking far they push themselves to do this stuff i actually asked him about some of the details of producing the video the shoot itself for the green screen stuff was a 12 hour day which isn't too bad but the process of editing compositing and animating all of it was five fucking weeks of 10 or 12 hour days which is just absolutely ridiculous for a music video if you do that generic band in a warehouse kind of video you probably don't spend more than a few days or maybe a week editing it these guys spent five fucking weeks the parts where they're cut out over the colored backgrounds those are hundreds and hundreds of hand painted cells like actually painted with like a paintbrush like they used to do on disney movies i actually have one of these framed on my wall which i love and you can just imagine how insanely labor intensive it is to make that and then the claymation parts like where the turds are singing in the toilet were done by the guys who did celebrity deathmatch and robot chickens so they got literally the best in the business to <laughs> animate their shit <laughs> so this level of execution holding yourselves to standards this high that is just fucking insane but that is how they roll and the results speak for themselves compare that video to your typical generic metalcore video another thing they did which i absolutely love and they went totally above and beyond on were the common courtesy webisodes i don't know if you guys saw those but it's a series of little skits that they did during the recording process of common courtesy they put so much effort into this like way more than they needed to they wrote an actual theme song for it that sounds like a real sitcom drew went crazy with the edits they went above and beyond on those things just like they do on everything else i don't know i could go on forever about this stuff because i just love all their videos all their artwork and packaging but you get the idea and one last point on their packaging that i wanted to mention they came out during the peak of that whole like neon cartoon monster trend and they definitely rode that wave and i'm sure made a ton of fucking money selling cartoon monster merch but they were able to evolve past that trend and stay relevant unlike other bands who maybe nailed that cartoon monster trend but then fell off because they didn't have any more ideas and it is super hard to be so tied to one scene or one trend and then successfully transition into a new era and again be relevant so i think they deserve a ton of credit for that so yeah that is key factor number two their great packaging so as far as the third key factor there's a lot of other things i thought about some really smart business moves they made like starting self-help fist and a day to remember records and how they won their legal battle over victory records and although all that stuff is super important and they deserve a ton of credit for it i think it's not as important as this key factor number three is that they built a community of real fans that would stick with them for the long term what i mean by that specifically is that they didn't do the boy band thing that was so common back then for bands in their genre they came up at the peak of metalcore and pop punk boy bands who got really big really fast that way by catering to fangirls but they never took that direction and i think it's one of the biggest factors in their longevity they have female fans of course which is great like if you go to one of their shows i think you'll see a lot of guys and a lot of girls that's great you want both of them at your shows but they never pandered to the girls like so many of the other bands and while that may have cost them in the short term i think they gained 10 times more in the long term for example think about this bad vibrations went to number two on billboard in 2016 when all the other scene bands had just absolutely fallen off the cliff as one example sleeping with sirens in 2013 their album feel went to number three on billboard that same year a day to remember released common courtesy which was number 37 on billboard but then a couple years later a day to remember continued to grow bad vibrations went to number two while sleeping with sirens next album in 2015 was was number 13 and then their 2017 album gossip was number 38 so you can clearly see one of these bands is on an upward trajectory the other is on a downward trajectory and you see that same thing play out with a lot of the other bands that had a big fangirl following they had a huge pop they got really big for a couple years but then as soon as the fangirls grew up they were left with nothing but a day to remember never had that problem because they never played that card they never tried to be a boy band they always focused on building a community of real fans who loved them them and their music that were going to stick with them for the long term and you'll see that as a common thread among a lot of the bands in their genre that have had real longevity a couple examples being every time i die august burns red parkway drive they have female fans
fans, yes, which is great, but they never tried to be a boy band. Here's the thing, pandering to fangirls is like steroids. You might get fast, easy gains, but as soon as you take them away, you lose all the gains. If you want real gains that are gonna stick around, gains you can keep, or in their case, fans that stick around, you have to be patient and you have to play the long game. And that is exactly what A Day to Remember has done. So that is key factor number three, that they built a community of real fans who would stick with them for the long term. All right, guys, so there you go. That is what I think are the three key factors for why A Day to Remember got so big. Number one, you gotta have great music. Number two, you need to have great packaging to go along with that music. And number three, play the long game. Don't go for that short-term burst of hype that won't last. Build real fans that will stick with you throughout your whole career. All right, guys, well, let me know in the comments what you think of this. Did I miss anything? Let me know what you think the key factors were to A Day to Remember's success. And let me know if there's a band you think I should do in a future episode of this. If you found this entertaining or educational or otherwise valuable, I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel. If you're already subscribed or for some strange misguided reason you do not want to subscribe, please like the video, leave a comment, share it with a friend. Anything that you can do to help spread the word would be very much appreciated. And with that, I'm going to sign off for now, but I will see you next time.